Yes, guys. So welcome back to questions, which are very, very important for an integral part to understand the standard is to assess what are the questions and how do we answer these kind of questions. So it's very important for you to pay attention to the questions as well, guys. So welcome back. So let's start solving the questions from now. I'll take up the first one. H Limited purchased an item of property, plant and equipment costing 100 million, which has a useful life of 10 years. The entity has been, has a contractual decommissioning and site restoration obligation estimated at 5 million to be incurred at the end of 10th year. The current market based discount rate is 8%. The company follows a straight line method of depreciation. H follows a cost model for accounting the property, plant and equipment. Determine the carrying value of the item of property, plant and equipment and decommissioning liability at the end of each year when there is no change in expected decommissioning liability and expected timings that they incur and the decommissioning expenses and discount rate. At the end of year 4, an entity expects that the estimated cash outflow on account of decommissioning and site restoration to be incurred at the end of useful life is 8 million instead of 5 million. Determine in case B, how should we account for the changes in decommissioning liability? Read the question once again. I'll give you time to read through the question and then we will start solving the answer. Yes, guys, read through the question and tell me how are we supposed to approach this question. Now, if I say that the cost of the asset is 100 million, let's say everything is in millions itself. Okay. The useful life of the asset is 10 years. There is a contractual obligation for decommissioning and site restoration estimated at 5 million to be incurred at the end of 10th year. Market discount rate is 8%. Okay. So I'll have to identify what is the present value of the decommissioning cost, which I will incur at the end of the 10th year, which is 5 million, applying a discount rate of 8%. So 5 million into 8% for 10 years, present value factor you multiply, you will get the answer. The company follows straight line method and a cost model for accounting the PP. Determine the carrying value of property, plant and equipment and decommissioning liability every year when there is no change in the expected decommissioning expense the timing to be incurred and the discount rate first part of the question let's try to solve this okay First, the purchase price. What is the purchase price of the asset? Hundred million. Estimated dismantling cost. Dismantling and site restoration cost actually. Estimated cost of dismantling the asset is 5 million. Useful life of the asset is 10 years. Correct. Discount rate. is 8%. Applying this, if I have to calculate what is the present value of estimated cost of dismantling, I 
at the end of useful life of the asset then i'll calculate like this 5 into present value factor 8% for 10 years calculate use your calculator get the present value factor I'll take up to two decimals guys. I don't want to unnecessarily get into too much of uh, percent 10 years 0.46 is your answer 5 into 0 0.46 4631 actually it is 4632 0.46 into 5 is 2.3 is the estimated cost of dismantle this should get added to the cost of the asset therefore cost of asset to be capitalized is equal to 100 million plus 2.3 million which is 102.3 million I have to depreciate it for a period of 10 years. So what is the depreciation per annum on a straight line basis if I depreciate depreciation per annum is equal to 10.23. I'll calculate the carrying value of the asset and the decommissioning liability each year. Yet, depreciation per annum WDB cost model or cost approach opening decommissioning liability interest at the rate of 8% closing liability calculate each year guys year one what is the depreciation per annum 10.23 what is the original cost 102.3 minus 10.23 is 92.07 year two again reduce it by 10.23 81.84 year 3 again reduce it by 10.23 you will get an answer of 71.61 year 4 again reduce it by 10.23 61.38 I don't want to do it beyond this but actually he is asking you to do it for the entire 10 years but ultimately it's the same calculation i don't want to repeat it the reason why i am doing it until year four is because in the question he said at the end of year four there's a change in the estimation in part b in part b he has given you that there's a change in the estimate at the end of year four so taking that into consideration i am only considering up to uh year three okay Let's come back to decommissioning liability then. What is the decommissioning opening liability guys? Opening liability of decommissioning cost is 2.3 multiplied by 8% 0 0.184 So this will be 2.484 or we'll take it only up to two decimals i think that is better anyways we are rounding off take until only two decimals 2.48 into 8 percent 1.99 or 0 0.19 or actually 0 0.20 
2.68 is the closing liability. 2.68 opening liability for the third year multiplied by 8 percent 0.21 this is 2.89 calculate it further 2.89 into 8 percent 2.89 and 0.23 which is nothing but 3.12 so guys i am trying to calculate like this and i keep on ma uh, uh, identifying this cost so what are the two entries which i have to pass here every year if you ask me to write, write the entry i'll record it like this depreciation account debit in year one if i'm talking about depreciation account debit to asset i'll also record one more entry interest cost which is notional to provision for dismantling which is the liability which I created. Write the entry. Depreciation each year should be 10.23. First year, interest cost to be recorded by increasing the provision by 0 0.18. 0 0.18. Everything is in millions. This is how I record the two entries at the end of each year. Entry will remain the same, but interest portion will keep on changing. Second year 0.2, third year 0.21, fourth year 0.23. Like this, I'll keep on calculating up to year 10 and passing each year both these entries. Depreciation entry will remain constant, but your interest entry will keep on changing. Now let's go back to what the question says in part B. In part B, he is asking us to do something. Let's see what part B says. In part B, he is saying at the end of year 4, the entity expects that the estimated cash outflow on account of decommissioning and site restoration to be incurred at the end of the useful life of the asset is 8 million. He is saying the decommissioning liability is right now 8 million. Then how do I calculate? When is it at the end of year 4? So let's try. Part B. Estimated decommissioning cost. Is equal to. 8 million. When is this? At the end of year 4. When are you going to incur the expense? At the end of year 10. So my present value of decommissioning cost is equal to 8 million into present value factors 8% for 6 years calculate why 6 years because 4 years are already done so I'll have to calculate it for 6 years so it should be 8 into 0 0.63 8 into 0 0.63 is 5.04 So you want the decommissioning cost to be 5.04 right now, but at the end of year 4, if you look at, the decommissioning liability is only 3.12. So your decommissioning liability should increase to become 5.04. Increase in present value of decommissioning cost. What is the increase in present value of decommissioning cost? It has to become 5.04.
it was 3.12 earlier as per previous one which we calculated so therefore the increase should be how much the increase should be one point nine two how do you recognize this entry to be recognized here is i have to increase the value of the asset along with that i'll also have to increase the provision for present value of decommissioning cost or provision for this decommissioning cost to provision for decommissioning amount is 1.92 now what is the carrying value of this set now carrying value of a set is equal to at the end of year 4 the carrying value of the asset was 61.38 this 61.38 should be increased by 1.92 61.38 1.92 therefore the carrying value of the asset will be 63.3 so what is your depreciation per annum now the revised depreciation per annum over the remaining six years will be 63.3 divided by 6 which is nothing but 10.55 earlier i charged only a depreciation of 10.23 right now I will start charging a depreciation of 10.55 for the remaining 6 years of the useful life of the asset. Clear? Let me know if you have any doubts guys. Any doubts in solution till here please make sure that you ask. Look at the solution. I am giving you the solution here. 2.32 is his cost. 10.23 is the depreciation he is calculated for all the 10 years we have done it only up to four years but it is the same calculation ultimately at the end of fifth year he got a cost of 5.04 approximation it is we, we got it 3.12 is getting it 3.15 the change is 1.92 according to us for him it was only 1.89 so according to 1.89 the revised depreciation is 10.55 which even we got we got the same thing the depreciation should be calculated at the rate of 10.55 from there on any doubts please let me know asset account debit to decommissioning provision 1.92 is the entry to be passed in year 4 
क्लियर आई होप एवरी वन गेट इट Let's get into question number two then. A acquires eighty percent shares of subsidiary B for three thousand two hundred, and the date of acquisition B Limited's identifiable assets are three thousand. A elects to measure NCI at proportionate share of net identifiable assets. Therefore, it identifies purchase consideration three hundred, NCI three thousand net identifiable assets. Into twenty percent, six hundred less total net assets three thousand. So therefore, a share of goodwill is eight hundred. Eight hundred is not total goodwill. It is a share of goodwill because there is also NCI share of goodwill which I did not consider. If I would have measured NCI at their fair value, then I will get the total goodwill. I'll show you. At the end of financial year, B's carrying value of the assets reduced to two thousand seven hundred, excluding goodwill. Recoverable amount uh, in, is two thousand in one case and two thousand eight hundred. Calculate impairment loss allocable to parent or NCI in both cases. Guys, right? this is a very interesting question, guys. Because whenever I look at this question, the first thing that you need to look at is he is looking at two concepts. One is goodwill, which arises on India's one zero three, and also the application of measuring NCI at fair value or proportionate cost. But the most important concept embedded into it is impairment of goodwill. Let's see the solution that he has given. We can solve it if you want, but it'll be quicker if we just browse through the solution. Yeah. Now, had this uh, uh, NCI been measured at its fair value, then NCI's proportion of goodwill will be two hundred. How did I get that NCI's proportion of goodwill being two hundred? Because eight hundred is the goodwill of eighty percent, that is, the holding company share. If eight hundred and eighty percent, then NCI share is two hundred. That means the total goodwill is thousand. The total goodwill is thousand, and the total other assets are two thousand seven hundred according to the question. That is what he said. Because at the end of the year, the uh, carrying value has come down to two thousand seven hundred only. Clear. That means the total value of the asset is two thousand seven hundred. If the recover three thousand seven hundred, if the recoverable value is only two thousand, that means there is a total impairment loss of seventeen hundred rupees. How will this impairment loss be cal be calculated? Out of this total impairment loss of two thousand seven of one thousand seven hundred, thousand goodwill should be adjusted. The balance. Seven hundred will be adjusted against other assets. Out of the thousand which you adjusted against goodwill, two hundred belongs to NCI which you did not recognize. But to the extent of eight hundred goodwill which was recognized, I will reduce it from goodwill, and the balance seven hundred will be re reduced from your other assets. And out of this seven hundred also, you need to understand that the seven hundred other assets belong to both. NCI as well as the parent enterprise. What is the proportionate holding? Eighty percent, twenty percent. So eighty percent parent company will recognize. Twenty percent NCI should recognize. So eighty twenty is five sixty and one forty. Exactly written like that. Parent will recognize eight hundred rupees loss in goodwill. Five sixty loss re uh, regarding other assets. NCI should have actually recognized goodwill of two hundred. But since you are not rec recognizing goodwill in the balance sheet. I'm not showing it, but other assets to the extent of twenty percent on seven hundred is one forty. What if your impairment, your recoverable amount is two thousand eight hundred? Then in such case, your impairment loss is only nine hundred. Out of impairment loss of nine hundred, 
which is less than the value of goodwill because goodwill itself is 1000. So 900 should be only cancelled against goodwill. But you need to understand 80-20, 80% belongs to holding company and 20% belongs to parent. So what is 80% of 900? Only 720 will be recognized as impairment in goodwill for the parent enterprise. Balance 80 rupees of goodwill will keep on continuing. Here the carrying value of the assets 2700 will still be there. So this is how we have to solve this. So if you want me to just give you a better clarity on how to solve this particular question, I can give it to you. Just a second guys. Okay. There are two parts in this, right? One is goodwill and other assets. How much goodwill did you recognize? I recognize goodwill only to the extent of 800, which is the parent enterprise share. If 800 is parent enterprise share, what is NCI's 20% share? 80% is 800, NCI's 20% is 200. What is the total goodwill? 1000. What are other assets? 2700 on balance sheet date. So that means by addition, the total net assets including goodwill in the enterprise is 3700 pertaining to the subsidy out of 3700 he is saying that the recoverable amount is only 200 sorry 2000 recoverable amount is 2000 that means I have an impairment of 1700. What did we learn regarding goodwill impairment? Any impairment loss should be first adjusted against the value of goodwill. So how do you allocate goodwill? Your allocation of impairment. Allocation of impairment. Thousand should be reduced from the goodwill and the balance 700 should be reduced from the value of asset. Here, the entire goodwill of holding company is written off entire 800. 800 and 200, 560 and 140. 80-20 ratio, correct? So this is parent enterprise and this is NCI. Parent enterprise, NCI. This is how we will adjust. If the answer would have been different, that means if the recoverable amount is not 2000, in the other part of the question, he said, consider the recoverable amount to be how much did he say? In part B, 2800. Then if your answer is 2800, then how will your answer change? Instead of taking recoverable amount as 2000, take it as 2800. Then what will happen? My impairment instead of 1700 will become only 900. How will you allocate 900? If I have to allocate 900, then I will allocate only directly to my goodwill, 900. Out of 900, allocated to goodwill parent will take 80 percent 720 nci will take 80 there is no further reduction in other value of asset because entire 900 got adjusted only against the value of goodwill so this is regarding impairment of goodwill in the subsidiary whenever you are whenever you are trying to solve the questions Clear guys, I hope I was clear with this cal calculation.
my question number three Netravati Limited purchased a commercial office space as an investment property in Global Trade Center Commercial Complex for 5 crores. However, for purchasing the same, the company had to obtain a membership of Global Trade Center Commercial Complex Association by paying 6,25,000 as one-time joining fee. Some commercial space of 5 crores, guys, it had a membership to be acquired at 6,25,000. Netravati wants to write off one-time joining fees as expense under membership and subscription charges value of properties 5 crores advice answer is absolutely wrong because he clearly said the company has to obtain a membership uh, uh, to purchase to uh, at the time of purchase the company had to obtain the membership so that means in order to use that commercial space you need to obtain that membership it is incidental to the purchase of the property Therefore, you have to capitalize the entire 5 crore 6 lakh 25,000. Would your answer change? Had the office space been purchased with an intention of using it as an administrative asset? Guys, be it in days 16, be it in days 40 investment property. My computation or measurement of cost at the time of acquisition is the same. So, my answer will not change. The cost of the asset is 5 crore 6 lakh 25,000, no doubt. So, no charging it off to PNL. Answer is 5 crore 6 lakh 25,000. As per in days 40, the cost of purchased investment property comprise of its purchase price plus directly attributable cost. Accordingly, on initial recognition, the one time joining fee of 6 lakh 25,000 should be added to purchase price. Therefore, the investment property should be measured at 5 crore 6 lakh 25,000. And writing off that 5 crore 6, sorry, 6 lakh 25,000 to PNL is inappropriate. If the property plan and equipment, if the property is used as administrative center and not as investment property, then India 16 shall be applicable. Even under India 16, all direct cost of acquisition should be added to the purchase price. So the cost of asset under India 16 is also the same thing 5 crore 6 lakh 25,000. X is engaged in the construction industry and prepares its financial statements up to 31st March each year. On 1st April, X purchased a large property consisting of land for 2 crores and immediately began to lease the property to Y Limited on operating lease. That means it is an investment property. Annual rents were 20 lakhs. As on 1st April for 31st March 2015, the fair value of the property was 2 crore 60 lakhs. Under the terms of lease, Y Limited was able to cancel the lease by giving a 6 months notice and writing to Eximit. Y gave this notice on 31st March and vacated the premises on 30th September. On 30th September, the fair value of the property was 2 crore 90 lakhs. On 1st October, X Limited immediately began to convert the property into 10 separate flats of equal sizes which X intends to sell in ordinary course of business. So it is no longer investment property. Now it has become an inventory directly because you want to sell in ordinary course of business. What do you sell in ordinary course of business? Inventory. X spent a total of 60 lakhs on conversion project on conversion project on 30th of September to 31st of March 2016. The project was incomplete as on 31st March. And the directors of X Limited estimates that they need to further spend 40 lakhs to complete the project. After which, the flat could be sold at 50 lakhs. Examine how these three events should be reported in the financial statements of X Limited for the year ended on 31st March. Guys, initially it will be record, recognized as investment property because they are giving it on operating lease. After the lease is completed, they are converted into inventory. So, investment property should be derecognized and inventory should be recognized. Look at the answer. On 1st April the, uh, 2011, the property would be regarded as investment property since it is being held uh, uh, as an investment potential rather than owner-occupied property. The property should be measured based on cost model. There is no revaluation model under, inventory, uh, under inv investment property. Therefore, it should be 2 crores. On 30th September, the property ceases to be investment property since X Limited begins to develop the plots. 
it transfers invest transfers between investment property or owner occupied property and inventory does not change the carrying value therefore even though it became inventory i will still carry it at 2 crores itself even as inventory since the lease of the property is an operating lease each year of 10 2 lakhs 20 lakh rupees should be charged to pnl in the year 2016 first 6 months i received the lease which is 10 lakhs which should be charged to the pnl or which should be credited to pnl as income up to september end of september end of september i will derecognize the investment property and i will transfer the 2 crores to your inventory under inventory i'll have to additionally i have already additionally incurred 60000 rupees which should be added to the cost of closing inventory so 2 crore value of investment property plus 60 lakhs cost of development the inventory will be valued at 2 crore 60 lakhs the selling price of the property is 5 crores because 50 lakhs into 10 properties since the further cost to develop is 40 lakhs net realizable value is 4 lakhs 60 which is much higher than the carrying value of 2 lakhs 60 therefore the flats will be shown as a current asset as inventory at 2 lakh 2 crore 60 lakhs only and that will bring us to the end of today's session and the problems which are meant to be covered as far as these topics are concerned.